بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على سيدنا محمد اجمعين الصادق الامين محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم today ان شاء الله تعالى we deal with some concepts related to comparative literature we need to understand what is the meaning of comparative literature okay and how can we deal with comparison and also with literature if we start we have this introduction about literature as a concept as a genre of arts always we say uh, literature contains several genres or types or source like uh, drama novel poetry criticism comparison short story and many others these are what we call genres of literature but literature itself is a genre of arts the wide okay the big what we call a frame for arts here we have an essay chapter or part of the book uh, about uh, what is literature by uh, Thierry Egerton, a philosopher in the same field related to literature and comparison also. Start with this introduction. But before we read and analyze, we need to focus somehow on the, the title, comparative literature. We study the course called comparative literature and also we have the first title the first session with the same title, comparative literature. Comparative is an adjective, literature is a noun. So the key word of the title, which we need to realize, which we need to understand is what is literature. From literature, we need to go through what? Through comparison. Okay, the key word is literature. The other connecting or related element to literature is comparison. So what is com uh, comparative literature? Let's go first dealing with the, the concept of literature, the genre of literature. What is it? And how can we connect it with what? With the comparison or with com to be with a cause, a title, a dimension called comparative literature. In this introduction, we can say, starting, as uh, Egerton says, if there is such a thing called comparative literature as literary theory, then it would seem obvious or clear that there is something called literature. Again, after realizing the concept of comparative literature, we have another concept, literary theory. So it is a theory, an approach, a technique, a philosophy. Okay, this philosophy is related to literature, connected by or to literature. It would seem obvious that there is something called literature. So, which is the theory of? We need to understand or to realize that. The point should be understood as the theory of literature. Literary theory can be reflexed to mean that the, the main way, the key word, as we mentioned, is what is literature. So it is the theory of literature. Literary theory, the theory of literature. As Egerton says, we can begin then by raising the question. Before we read, I need, I need to realize the importance of starting any philosophy, any lesson, any explanation through what? Through a question. In order to appeal, explain, assess, attract, there must be, or as the philosopher spirit believes, raising a question, starting with a question. That the listeners like you should interact, should participate, 
but what kind of participation? What is interaction? Starting first individually by what? By thinking about the question. Everyone should try to answer the question in his or in her mind. Okay, then if there is a sort of debate later, the, 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 the issue, the matter, the topic, the subject will be, will be somehow understandable, easy. So raising the question, what is literature? Starting debates, discussions about the answer of, of, what, of what is literature. There have been various attempts to define literature. If we ask how many definitions for uh, literature, is it one? Must be many. Since we say there have been various attempts by home, not by everybody, not by every person, by every related scholar, okay, in the field, to define or to bring a picture or to depict literature. You, again, not everyone, but you, those who are related or interested in, in the field, like you, because you are what? scholars studying literature in uh, different kinds, different types or genres. You can define it. For example, again, for example means it is just one example. There might be others as imaginative writing in the sense of fiction. Fiction writing, eh? fiction writing, which is not literally true. What is that? If we stand a little with the word true, connected with the reality, if it is true, completely true, maybe you will get out somehow out of what of literature. Because literature is mixed within reality and idealism, realism and idealism with real events, facts, and symbolism. Symbolism is connected with imagination. So these elements sometimes should not be what we call isolated from literature, but also should not be completely fictitious, right? We, we will understand that step by step after we get deeper, realizing those elements. So fiction writing. Fiction can mean imaginative, it can mean fantasy, and also it can mean what? Story. Or using it as a story, it can be what can be true, but maybe not totally true. Like some stories, I can ask you, write a story telling us about what did you do from the early morning until the, the uh, late evening. Everyone will explain uh, the procedures or the events or the actions, of course, differently, but some of you will go through what through imaginative ideas, not to express the ideas free, totally true or literal. Okay, but even the briefest reflection on what people commonly include under the heading of literature suggests that this will not do. Will not be like that. Will not be what either this or that will be true or fantasy or imaginative. No, sometimes it can be this, it can be that. So again, according to uh, Eagleton, 17th century English literature, for this period of time, the 17th century, includes Shakespeare, Sylvester, Marvel, and Milton. All the works of these people, of these what we call literary figures, great literary figures, estimated as what has part of literature. But it also, it also stretches to the essays of Francis uh, Bacon, the sermons of John Doe, okay, binds spiritual 
spiritual photography, and whatever it was that Sir Thomas Brown wrote. All these are called or estimated as literature. It means in this case that there are some other writings by other Greek people not included in literature of the, the period. What is the period? The 17th century. Again, this idea might, might not be totally true. These are what we could call philosophy, theories by whom? By a great philosopher, yes, but this great philosopher might sometimes we don't agree with him, with uh, Tony Egerton. Okay, we take what is suitable for us. We believe in what is interesting for us. It might even at a pinch to be to be taken to encompasses Hobbes, Lethentan, or Clarendon's history of the rebellion. The French 17th century literature contains also, along with Comils and Russians. Sometimes these names are what uh, are difficult because not accustomed to them frequently. Maxims, which mean the proverbs, okay, philosophies. The funeral of Posit as a speeches. Julio, uh, trees on poetry. What kind of projects of writing on poetry by Julio? Madame de Sévenue's letters to her daughters and the philosophy of Descartes and Pascal. Descartes and Pascal. These are again related to the French, what you call 17th, uh, 17th century, yes. So it is called literature, all these. Who can see the historians, the literary, uh, what you call interested people or related people to that. Moving to the 19th century, we have English literature. English literature usually includes Lamb, Charles Lamb, though not Bentham. Sometimes we can find in the writings of Bentham some beautiful passages, pieces, essays, they are really better than Lamb. But many critics, theorists, philosophers, they exclude Bintan from being, uh, his writings, I mean, from being literature. Macaulay, but not Marx. Yeah, or Karl Marx. Macaulay, his writing are, uh, is called literature, are called literature. But the writing of Marx are not Mill, but not Darwin or Herbert Spencer. For Darwin, his theories, for a while in the beginning of the 20th century, made a revolution on psychology, on psychology. Okay, when he uh, wrote his theories about the genesis of humanity. And maybe you heard about this uh, theory, which uh, I don't know, which says that the human being, who, I mean, originally was <laughs> a monkey and developed, improved to be like uh, what he or she okay, is or are now. Yeah. So some others and now it, it, it seems to be what you call absurd, absurd theory. Okay, it's sort of what you can say in this book. For us, at least for us, for other people, not Muslims, we didn't know. Why for us it is a sort of uh, absurd or absurdity? Because we, we know as, as we understand the starting of humanity as it is mentioned in the Holy Quran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not only words, it is words of Allah. And knowing the creation of humanity starting Okay, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam by his hand from what we call from, uh, from parts of this uh, earth and from Adam, he subhanahu wa ta'ala created Abe. Okay, so Darwin 
wrote theories made the European uh, 20th century, beginning of 20th century, a crazy like uh, what you call movement. Okay. Here is a picture to tell about what the center of literature. That literature contains many huge number of, of elements, of aspects to be read, to be studied, to be understood, to be analyzed, to be assessed, to be evaluated, to be discussed or criticized. Many, many, many elements. Okay. And here is what we call a sort of particular picture, grasping elements to understand. Okay. Going further, a distinction between fact and fiction. As we mentioned that it is fiction writing, fiction writing or writings. Now we need to realize and understand what kind of fiction and what, what we have, the opposite of fiction, it is what it is fact. Fact and fiction, there should be both of them in literature. We can find pieces in drama, in novel, in poetry, in short stories. Pieces are what are real, fact. Speaking about history, speaking about what you call uh, epics, the people. At the same time, we can find what fictitious stories, even poems, imaginative poems. Okay, even they are telling something about someone, some place, some time. They bear both. They bear both. Okay, reality and fictitious, or fiction. For example, what is the example we can uh, give about fact. Someone might write an epic about the revolution, about the Renaissance, revival, unification of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, telling the, the story of the kingdoms, what we call unification under the role of King Abdul Aziz Rahmatullahi. So it is a, an epic. It is a, a, a novel, a drama, a play. Is it fact or fiction? No, it is fact in this case. Because this person, this writer, okay, should go with what with historical elements, but the style, the language is what is literary. A, an epic a long poem, a novel, a drama, or even pamphlets. Okay, like this. This is just an example. At the same time, there can be stories about any situation. You can imagine it yourself. Talking about, for example, okay, Hamlet of the 20th century. We know Hamlet, of course, you know Hamlet. Hamlet is a character, okay, in one of the plays of Shakespeare. When you say Hamlet of the 20th century, it can be a story, a victual story, fantasy story about the character Hamlet of Shakespeare, but in a modern perspective, modern notions, you realize, look how many aspects we have taken through what comparison between fact and fiction then seems unlikely to get us very far yeah we are still revolving around the point not least because the distinction itself is open a questionable one yes under debate debate it has been our goal for instance that our own opposition between historical and artistic sometimes when we speak about history and to exclude it from what from uh, being literature. Artistic, is it real or is it what? Fantasy, okay. Historical truth, artistic truth, doesn't apply at all to the early Icelandic sagas. Here the writer uh, talks about what some folklorical uh, stories called the sagas of Ireland or Iceland Island, I think, or Iceland, yeah, Icelandic. Okay, okay, one of the what we call uh, states combined United Kingdom. 
among Ireland, England, Wales, Irish, Ireland, the Irish, the, the Irish is the adjective, yeah. Okay, let's go on. In the English late 16th and early 17th centuries, the word novel, starting from here, seems to have been used among both true and fictional events. Yeah, we agree with that. There are novels, they are true. There are novels, they are fictitious, completely fantasy. Okay, and there are novels mixing between this and that. And even news reports were hardly to be considered huh, factual. Clear. Novels and newspapers were neither clearly factual nor clearly uh, fictional. Unless there is what we call documentation, real documentation, statutory recommendations, convincing can be what real, otherwise it can be fiction. It depends, we can say that probably, probably, probability doesn't mean that it is 100% sure, uh, true or 100% sure what uh, fiction or fantasy or imaginative. Our, those related people, uh, sharp discriminations between these categories simply did not apply, making a sort of confusing not to take a decision Okay, going to another theorist, again, still uh, dealing with the point according to whom, according to uh, Eagleton. So, Gibbon Ondot, Ondot thought that he was writing what historical truth. If it is truth, historical, why not making them literary? He can. And some, for some others, they don't believe, didn't believe in that. And so, perhaps that the authors of the Genesis, as, I, as we mentioned, but they were, they are now read as fact by some and fictions by others. Convincing, persuasion. Is it documented? Is it accepted by the mind or by facts? We can say that it is real. No, the mind not accepting them can be what? Fictional. Going to another one, Newman certainly thought his theological meditations were true. His meditations were true, but for some others, they can say that they are what? They are not true, they are fanciful. But they are now, for many readers, readers of literature, they are what? Fictional, they are not real. Moreover, if literature includes much factual writings, it is also exclude. It also excludes quite a lot of fiction. This is the natural element, natural aspect. Superman, economic, and Mills and Bacon and Boone novels are what fiction, but not generally regarded as literature. Yeah. Why? Because they are not even not mixed with what with with the reality. When you watch uh, Superman, okay, or uh, any other what you call uh, legend, legendary uh, work, a novel or a drama like The Hobbit or even Harry Potter, so they are what fictional, fictitious, completely, completely. Uh, not, uh, there is no mixing with reality to believe in, in them as literature. So they are what they are excluded. And they, especially for Superman uh, stories, and the similar things also, are certainly not literature. They are estimated, not literature. Okay, what is in red is important that if literature is creative or imaginative writing, does this imply that, that history philosophy and natural science and uncreative and imaginative and imaginative. If literature is creative or imaginative writing does not imply that history, philosophy and natural sciences are uncreative and unimaginative. 
what is that? When we say, for example, natural sciences, what is, what is natural sciences? Natural sciences like what? Like uh, the study of medicine, the study of engineering, the study of science and, and uh, yeah, chemistry, uh, physics. Hmm? These depends on theories, and these theories should be what dealt with, should be dealt with what we call experiments. And these experiments are being done by specific, what we call components, specific materials. For example, just, oh, Dr. Flan has created created what Pepsi from salt. You know that salt is composed of sodium and I don't remember what uh, sodium and calcium uh, with a specific measurements to make what to make salt. Okay. This is what this is real science. Okay, it is not a philosophy. But if you say that yeah, from salt, uh, from salt, sorry, uh, this science, this scientific person or uh, scholar created uh, Pepsi or Cola or any sort of juice. It is what imaginative. So it is not accepted to be what to be uncreative. Creatively to bring something rational, persuasive, huh? like that. Perhaps one needs an, a different kind of approach to Vida or to Vida. Perhaps literature is definable, not according to whether it is fictional or imaginative, but because underlined, it uses language in a peculiar ways. It is a point of view, still a perspective. We agree sometimes, we don't agree, it doesn't matter. But it is what the beautiful point of view. On this theory, it uses language in peculiar ways. Literature is a kind of writing, which in the words of the Russian critic Jacobson or Roman Jacobson, we quote now, uh, represents and organized violence committed on ordinary speech. Mixing it with something reasonable and acceptable. What is it? literature related to language and word? Yeah. So again, literature transforms and in, intensifies ordinary language, deviates systemica, systematically from everyday speech. Yeah, it should be different from everyday speech. Everyday speech doesn't show philosophy, doesn't show what you call creativity, right? It should be higher, higher in estimation. If you approach me at bus, this is an example, at bus stop and murmur saying I'm, I'm hearing for all, though still <laughs> I'm rather bird of uh, quaintness, then I am instantly aware that I am in the presence of the little. Can you find such a situation? Be sit, okay, in the bus stop waiting for uh, the bus uh, to move or to travel from a place to another. Can you find su such a one? Say, no. Yeah, these these words are higher in estimation. They are not everyday language, so you cannot find them in in, in every aspect of life, everyday situation. Okay. Going to this point, huh? this in fact was the definition of the literally advanced by the Russian formalists, formalists, a group of people to deal with what with the form, to be interested in the form, okay, who included in the rank Viktor Chubisky, Roman Jacobson, Osip Prick, Yuri Tinuru, Boris Ichimpu or Ichimbu and Tomashipsky, yeah, Boris Tomashipsky. All these are leaders of what of formalism. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, uh, 
we can find difficulties in the names, um, a sort of lachbadation in the names, no problem. But what is this theory connected with the formalism, formalists? The formalist emerged in Russia in the years before the 1917s, I mean, in the first two decades of the 20th century. Another movement is called Bolshevik, and uh, Taural Bolshevia, revolution, Bolshevik revolution, and flourished throughout the 20s, I mean, after the formalists, until they were effectively silenced, means stopped by Stalinism. Okay, led by Stalin, the dictator of uh, former Soviet Union, Russian today, Stalin, Stalin. A militant political group of critics, they rejected the quasi mystical symbolism, symbolism or symbol doctrines, which had influenced literary criticism before them. According to the nature of people, yeah. People sometimes in a, uh, a phase of time, a decade, two decades, they believe in, in a theory. After a while, some other people to come to what they, they uh, refuse such theories mentioned by their pre uh, predecessors. And they believe in something new, something maybe new, something maybe uh, okay, ancient. And in particular, a particular scientific spirit shifted the attention to the material reality of that literary text itself. Instead of thinking about what you call about a certain philosophy, for example, about the writer, when we uh, deal, for example, with what with uh, a play by Shakespeare. Have you studied a play by Shakespeare? A play by Shakespeare? Yes. Okay. Who is Shakespeare? The one who wrote this great play or these great plays for the foremost doesn't matter. They don't care about the person. Okay? They, they don't care about the, the mind of the about the person himself. They care about what is produced by this mind. About what? About the text, about the thought of the work mixing that with criticism. Criticism should dissociate art from mystery to separate art in general, mystery to separate art in general and literature in part of it from what from mystery, from mysterious events. What is mystery, legend, myth, fiction, fictuous, okay? not realism, idealism, and concern itself with how literary text actually work. So, so they, they put themselves on a concept, on a theory, on an element to go after. What is it? Believing. Do they believe or not? Does the mind believe in that or not? Another idea about literature, we can say that literature was not pseudo-religious or psychology or sociology. However, so again, this is the idea of Eagleton. We should go back to Eagleton because it doesn't sometimes refer to our, our own believing. Just we get ideas of others, then we formulate our believing. But a particular organization of language, excluding Pseudo religion, psychology, sociology, and focusing mostly on what? On the language. What else? It had its own specific laws. Yeah, because the language has its rules. Structures, yes. Devices, yes. Grammar, vocabulary, words, managing, which were to be studied in themselves rather than reduced to something else, not to connect them with others with psychology. Do we believe in, in, in that? Personally, I can, yes, I can say yes, I can say no. Not, not everything to exclude psychology and uh, philosophy and religion from literature. 
because literature is part of life. As we always say, literature is a mirror of life in all its genres, poetry, drama, novel, short story, or whatever. So it is a mirror, or it is, yeah, a mirror, or uh, they are mirrors of life in life. Okay, again, the literary work was neither a vehicle of ideas or reflections, not just reflections, of social realities, nor the incarnation of some transcendental truth. It should be this and that. It was a material fact. Now look to the difference, starting with the fiction, now going back to what to the fact connected with material. The material fact was functioning, job, beauty, could be analyzed rather as one could examine a machine. Yeah. It is and it was need of words because it depends on language, not of objects or feelings. Objects like signs, feelings like imaginations and symbols and all images. And again, it was a mistake to see it as the expression of another mind, connected with this mind also. Fulan, okay, uh, has a thought, a specific thought. Should I apply his thought on the, on his neighbor, on his okay, next door sitting? No, of course not. Everyone has his own, what you call, thought and mind. For formalism was essentially the application of linguistics to, to study of literature. So, okay, good. To connect language with linguistics. Now we shift to another dimension, mixing between the language, pure language, and it's what it's what you call uh, mechanics, linguistics, the mechanics of language to the study of literature. That literature depends on linguistics also. Okay, because linguistics is what is the mechanics of the language. And because the linguistics in question were of a formal kind. Formalism, for and formal. What else concerned in mean, this linguistics, okay, or linguistics concern with the structure of language? Yes, sure rather than with what one might actually say. The formalism passed over the analysis of literary concern for the study of literature, form, form, form. For the study of literature called form. From this point appeared the formalism, where one might always be tempted uh, into psychology or sociology. They exclude psychology and sociology from being what you call uh, essential components for what? For uh, literature. But personally, I believe that uh, why not? I, I don't mind to have what you call even psychology or sociology or philosophy to be among the basis of literature. It is the, the idea, the first idea about what, what is literature. For more points about what is literature, kindly go read more uh, on the book, on the handout, okay, especially by, by Thierry Egerton. It is included in the handout and also this one will be, uh, will be uploaded to the specific place on graphic. Another point to realize what is comparative literature? What is comparative literature? So now going deeper, Another point from just what is literature. Now we insert the concept of comparison. How is that? Compared to literature is an academic field dealing with the study of literature only, no, and cultural expression across linguistic, national, disciplinary, 
boundaries. I feel that this definition is very interesting. Of course, it is not fall, but it is understandable. Yeah, we believe in that to a great degree. Academic, yes, because it depends mostly on the scholar, scholarly searching among academics. Okay. What to deal with? To deal with study, like what you do, study literature, study of literature, and culture, life, representing life. Cultural expression, again, expression means language, connected with the culture and expression, connected with language of life. Across linguistic, through linguistic boundaries, national boundaries, disciplinary boundaries also. Using some dimensions, some elements like what? Like linguistic, like national, like the survey, national or international, because it is connected with what with boundaries. To make a comparison between a literary work in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, within the King Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Okay, Jutaria, Shalgia, Mecca, Medina, Jazan, Taif, okay, Al Khuba. This is what we call national connected within the country within the kingdom it can be what regional between kingdom of Arabia, kingdom of bahrain uh, united arab emirates oman any uh, gulf country or arab countries you can say kingdom of Saudi Arabia. you can say iraq uh, egypt algeria Okay, Algeria, all these are regional and also international. I mean, this one, this definition is satisfactory to give ideas about comparative literature from the beginning until the end. Uh, let me take uh, five minutes to finish it until we finish this part, at least, at least to finish this part. Okay, comparative literature performs a role similar to that of the study of international relations. Why international relations? Because it deals with the relationship with, with, among, among nations, but wars with languages. So we focus in literature on languages and artistic traditions, so as to understand cultures from what from inside while most frequently practiced with the works of different languages, like comparative literature, may also be performed on works of the same language among the uh, Arab work, words, for example, if the words originated from different nations or cultures among which hmm, that language is spoken, either in the kingdom, for example, in the Arab words, kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Egypt, yes, intercultural and Transitional, intercultural means going beyond the boundaries, okay, different countries, and transitional field of comparative literature, concerned with what with the relationship between literatures, not only literature, literatures, broadly defined, and other uh, spheres, spheres means, countries, for example, of human activities, including history, politics, philosophy, art, and science. All these are what are included in the way of comparison. Unlike other forms of literary study, comparative literature places its emphasis on the interdisciplinary. This is what we needed to understand. Interdisciplinary, it means international. Not only one field, not only, only one, one aspect, but different interdisciplinary analysis of social, cultural and eh, productions within the economy, political dynamics, cultural movements, 
Israel shifts religious differences, the urban in all of these huh? international relations, like international relations, uh, public policies, and the sciences, even the sciences to be what to be realized to again combat the literature is the study of common features in the literature, cinema, the other forms of culture, production across national and regional boundaries, as I mentioned, huh? across national and regional countries, from an intercultural to interdisciplinary and global perspectives, okay? Today, we live in a global society where language, literature, and cultures, what? Intersect, interplay, yeah, they are what? Interrelated. And that is why it is important to broaden our scope broaden our scope with knowledge, with experience, with understanding. Why? To understand the many diverse ways. Understand many diverse ways in which human beings perceive, realize, and relate to the world and each other. We offer courses in the literatures, not only literature, cultures, not only culture, of Arabia, Europe, and Americans, China, India, Japan, Korea, huh? Vietnam, and East or West, no problem, in Africa or any other country. In comparative literature, classes you will read works in translation. There should be translation. There should be translation because translation should transmit the, the language of people. Uh, I think uh, here we should stop to finish it in the next session, inshallah. Uh, because we have taken more than should be.